And here we are again with the Holy Spirit teaching. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries Bible School. We're in hour number two. And this session is called The Ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so in John chapter 16, we're going to read in verse 7. Jesus speaking, and he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So the best thing that Jesus could have done was to die and be resurrected. You all know that. Expedient was best for the church. It's better to have the Holy Spirit than Jesus in the flesh. Because he's here all around the world, the Holy Spirit. But Jesus was just in one place at one time. So the apostles were better off after the resurrection than they were before Jesus died. You all follow where I'm going with this. Yeah. So it was expedient that I go away. That's what Jesus is saying. For if I don't go away, then the Holy Spirit won't come. So how many know this is how it has to go in Jesus' name? So what I want to share with you is in John 16, we're there already, in verse 8. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this outpouring of the Spirit of God. And we thank you right now for revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in this word. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So what in this scriptures that you read here is there's three levels of operation of the Holy Spirit. And this is important that most people don't identify right away. So I wanted you to grasp this in the second hour. Number one, the first level operation of the Holy Spirit is to convict of sin. In other words, to judge and prove them guilty. Say, whose job is it? The Holy Spirit's job to convict of sin, not yours. So when you go downtown and you see the big parades, people out there, repent, you sinners are going to hell. That's not their job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. The conviction is like, you're guilty, done, you're going to hell. That's the conviction people hear in their hearts. And it's the Holy Spirit's responsibility, not yours. Amen. Amen. The second level of operation is to convict on the lack of righteousness. And i got news for you. You know before you're saved, you're not right with God. You know that you're not doing anything correctly. You think you're living a good life. You might not be harsh and yelling, screaming, stealing stuff. But you're still not walking right with God. And you know it. And the Holy Spirit will convict on the lack of righteousness. And the third operation that the Holy Spirit does is convict of pending judgment. Now, that's what we just read. I will read it to you one more time. And when he has come, he's here now, he will reprove the world of sin, singular, S-I-N, the nature of sin, not your acts of wrongdoing, of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. The sin that you're going to get judged on, you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what's going to send you to hell. Amen. Not because you picked your nose and yelled and screamed and cursed. It's because you're acts of wrongdoing. It's because you don't believe in Jesus. Now you can believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior and still act and cuss and screw and do all the stuff you're not supposed to. You say, how can you do that? It's because you're rebellious. And guess who's going to get worked on by the Holy Ghost all the rest of your life till you get that life yours straight? Because you're to work out your salvation. Everybody understand working out your salvation? Jesus Christ made your, made your spirit sin less as soon as you accepted Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit says, okay, now you don't have to act like this. Now this is where the work comes in. I said, oh goody, I finally got unsaved. Now I've got to teach them how to wear their clothing correctly. It's called robes of what? Righteousness. And so sometimes it takes people a little bit longer than others. The reason why is because they haven't fallen in love with him. That's all it amounts to. Mm -hmm. They haven't had that communion. 
with the Spirit of God. And when that happens, man, I'll tell you what, there's a few of us guys in this room. Man, does the rose-colored glasses come on when we fall in love, right? I mean, the person you're out with can't do nothing wrong. Woo! I'm taking them this place, and I'm going to do this for them because I love them. That's how you got to see the Holy Spirit. It's how you got to see Jesus. how you got to see God. And when a man makes those decisions, he, it's done deal. I'm in love with him the rest of my life. That's how it is. But you know how long it takes him before he makes that decision? Sometimes it's a little long, and it shouldn't be that way. Because he hasn't taken the time to develop the relationship. Guys like to see things grow and prosper. But they don't want to put any effort in it. And it takes some time. And so when a man says, okay, Lord, I can do this, and jumps in all the way, gets soaking wet, he's in forever and he's going to enjoy it. He'll like it. And that's the best part of the whole thing. So the Holy Spirit has three levels of operation. And these levels of operation are on unbelievers, not unbelievers. They're on persons who do not believe in Jesus Christ. It's for unbelievers. The Spirit convicts of sin, and the believer's conscience convicts him of sin. Are you following me? The Holy Spirit will take a non-believer and convict him of sin. A believer, his conscience will convict him of sin. You all follow the difference? Okay, so once you realize that, oh, because I got good news for you. And I'm sure you all identify this, that when you have become a saved person and you believe in Jesus Christ and you willfully sin and you know it and you just blatantly know you're doing it, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father never say a thing to you about it. And you know it. But your, your conscience goes, oh no. And that's why you, you cry. That's because you know you hurt him. He loves you. And now you're you're saddened, and that's called remorse. And that's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Romans chapter 14. Bless God for the Bible. I am so excited Amen. for what God has given us. Okay, in, in Romans chapter 14, look at verse 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Sin only on unbelief. It's the sin of unbelief. Not of murder or acts of wrongdoing. In other words, remember Saul of Tarsus? Anybody know? He killed a man. And I think he killed more than one. Stephen got stoned, but Paul held his clothes his cloak, which means he's an access part of this murder. He's participant. It's like you're robbing a bank and I'm just driving a car. We're both in on it together. So he was part of that. But you realize he went to a lot of churches and they kicked him out of the church. It wasn't because of what he preached. I'm sure of it. It's because of what he did. Hey, I know who you are. I know what you did to so-and-so's kid. Man, you threw him in prison and you wouldn't let him out. People still held unforgiveness. Do you think these people were nice? Yeah, and some of it was what he preached. But you've got to realize Saul of Tarsus, he killed somebody. It is a change of heart from hardness to one that can believe. So we're talking about no faith in Jesus. And I'm using this scripture to show you because without faith, and you know to use it, and you're not using it, it is sin to you. And when you realize, hey, I've made a decision, I'm following after Jesus, then you backslide, you know you're sinning. Whoa. So Jesus wants us, Stay strong. Holy Spirit's going to show you how to stay strong and to do it in Jesus' name. Okay, in 1 John chapter 3, 1 John 3, we see in verse 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So the transgression of the law is not believing in God. You see, you realize you'll run across a whole lot of people called Jews who do not believe in Jesus. Oh, I'm a Jew. Well, I said, they're your Messiah Jew? Messianic Jew? Oh, no. And they get real offended. 
So I've been seeking the Lord and said, okay, how does that Jew get his sins forgiven? Now, the Holy Spirit's teaching me. I don't know what they do. I haven't asked them. The only way the Bible says that before Jesus was to, was to do the entire law and never do anything wrong. And if they do the entire law and don't do anything wrong, then that's accounted to them as righteousness. Justified. But you all know, everyone falls short of the glory of God. So how do they get forgiven? I don't know. I'm going to find that out in Jesus' name. But the Spirit of the Lord wants us to believe not only in God, but in His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit will show us how that He's still alive. Amen. Raised from the dead. So, a person not believing is under condemnation and conviction of the Holy Spirit in that person's life. And we know where that is at. Everybody says, I prayed in tongues. I know Pastor Robert's going to John chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're all laughing at this joke, but you've got to realize, <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I mean, how simple is that? He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is so simple. All you got to do is say, in Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, God's Son. I am in. How hard is that? It's not hard at all. But a person who doesn't do that is already condemned and they know it. I read a magazine from Jesse Duplantis. He sent me one the other day. And he was talking to a pastor who was about ready to throw in the towel and forget teaching the word because he was going downhill financially. He was going down all kinds of areas of his life. And he, told, and he, and he confessed to, to Jesse Duplantis, I'm just going to quit doing the gospel and I'm going to go back to the ways of the world. So Jesse walked over, grabs him by the wrists and drags him to the kitchen and puts his hand over the gas stove where the gas flames come up and he put his hand, you feel that heat? Yeah, what are you trying to do, burn me? He says, you feel it? Yeah, I feel it. Well, that's what hell is going to be like. You sure you want to go? And I straightened that pastor right out real fast because hell is a place where you're going to burn and you're not going to be with God and there's no love, there's nothing there. It's, it's a, it didn't take much to convince him that he wasn't going to quit. Amen. Amen. So, we don't want to sit around and let sin dominate us, do we? So the Holy Spirit's helping us tonight. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 in verse 3. And the scriptures are coming alive tonight because the Spirit of God has given us revelation knowledge. It's illuminating the scripture. He's comparing the scripture to us so we understand it. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. The Son of God is revealed in you by faith. Did you hear what I said? The Son of God is revealed in us by faith. Once faith is in you, that's the born-again experience. Once that's happened, once you believe, you think and you act differently. As you ought to. Now, let me help you out. The Holy Spirit just wanted me to give you a little extra on this grace. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And people will turn that around and say, Oh, you can't be doing that. You, 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 you're transforming yourself too high. You have to really put yourself down. That's not what the Scripture says. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. How high in the God's, well, let's put it this way, in God's arena or his kingdom, how high can you be in that arena? Everybody say there's only one height, saint. That's it. Well, you're saint so-and-so. Well, so am I. I'm saint so-and-so. You're saint this. That's as high as you're going to get. So why are you thinking you're going to go any higher when God already made us just a little tiny a little bit lower than himself? Hey, so when you stop and think of it, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, is verse 2, okay? 
For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. This is how high you are, saint. But to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. When you start realizing, I've got the measure, I'm just using mine more than you are using yours, but that doesn't make me higher than you. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I'm operating in the measure of faith that God has given me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, Acts chapter 2. I learned how to say amen and say it with enthusiasm. Entheos, God in me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. That, does that mean uh, the amen part? Or Anyway, that's a joke. Thank you. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? Isn't that an interesting statement? What should we do? This scripture that I just read you, you'll see that the Holy Spirit spoke to their heart of unbelief. They were pricked in their heart. I have a little heartache. You guys, maybe it's a little belch or something. No, that's not the pricking of the heart. It's the spirit man that's not right with God. So the Holy Spirit, which isn't sad, but if you see behind the lines, behind with the scenes, what's going on, he's the one who's condemning them of sin and unrighteousness and pending judgment. And he pricked their hearts. And they said, well, what are we going to do? Well, he says, repent. And call on the name of the Lord and be saved. That's what we told them to do. Because I've had people say that. In Jesus' name, amen. So that you can see the Holy Spirit is pricking their heart of unbelief. There will be a time when you're preaching the gospel to people that you know that are not saved. And you're going to know in your heart. You don't need to say anything more except now's the time to ask Jesus in your heart because you know the Holy Spirit said now and you do it and they'll get saved there's nothing more to say they already hear it in their heart they're already ready to go for it close the sale so to speak in Jesus name amen, amen. John chapter 6 please so when you identify what I'm teaching you here is the ministry of the Holy Spirit how does he function in getting someone saved when you identify, see, this is what throws people off. They don't know that they're supposed to be acting like this, but I'm teaching you so you can. When it's time for you to go out and get people saved, it's time, and you know you're going to go down to, a, let's just say our, we go down to the bus stop and get people saved here. When you know you're going to go out there and get someone saved, do you know that the Holy Spirit is working with you? You've got to know that he's doing it. When you are talking to this person and you feel like maybe they're not receiving, you have got to know in your heart that Holy Spirit is pricking that man's heart of doubt and unbelief that Jesus is the Son of God. The Holy Spirit's pricking that man's heart because he knows he's not right with God. The Holy Spirit is doing it, and you're telling him how much God loves him. And the Holy Spirit goes, see? <laughs> And this is what happens, because the Spirit of the Lord is working on that person, because He's judging them of sin. You all know this. Even though you're speaking out good things, and, and God loves you, and He wants you to accept His Son. And that's why the guy goes, leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with you. It isn't you. It's the Spirit of God that's ministering to him. And you've got to identify, it's the Holy Spirit that's ministering. But they see you. So don't take it personal. And I'll tell you, people can be really nasty when they're trying to get away from the Holy Ghost. But you got to say, you know what? That's when you're going to have to be wise with the Spirit of God and how He functions. So you, you don't know how long the Spirit of the Lord has been working with this person to set Him up for you to show up. So don't say, well, I planted a seed. That ain't what the Holy Spirit's looking for. He's looking for, reap that man right now. Reap him right now. I spent 29 years of this man's life, years to get him here. I brought you into this castle room to get you to understand, to go out there and get him saved. Now reap him. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. So don't go, I planted a seed, so I watered it. That's not getting the job done. Mm -hmm. Reap him. Did not Jesus say that the harvest is already white? Mm -hmm. let's, it's time to harvest it. Let's get it done. The fields are white for harvest. So it's time to reap him. So the Holy Spirit saying, hey, listen, I'm convicting their heart. You're not. So I just want you to get him in. 
Get him to say the prayer. I've got him set up. He's an easy one. Come on, you can do this. Okay, God. And that's why you got to know how he works. And this is his ministry. Don't you know it? It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to get people saved. And he's using us to participate in communion. And it's fun. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So it took us to John chapter, where am I? 6. 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Hello, everybody. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You've got to realize you are speaking life into this person. And it's the Holy Spirit that's quickening this person to get him born again. Amen. And he's using you. And it's a whole fun. And all the angels are going, come on, you can do it. Come on, we want to do it. We can. Because they're all going to go, hallelujah. We got them saved. Amen. Can you see all the thousands of angels just ready? For oh, he planted a seed. <laughs> Come on now. They're all the horns. We've got to put it everything away. We were going to shout. Well, all the confetti we're going to throw. And we didn't get to do it because, oh, the bus picked them up and they left. So you're going to have to learn how to reap quicker. Grab them up, slice them, put them in the basket. Get another one. Well, I don't know. Did God tell me I was supposed to do Yes. That's why you're here. Say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. So the Spirit quickeneth, right? But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father and God already said anybody who wants to come come on dinner's free John 3 16 come on 17 and 18 come on and Jesus anyone who wants it my father says fine it's, come on it's free give it up isn't it fun to watch what that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit and you go hey I get to do that too and the Holy Spirit Come on, I'll show you where the bait is. Come on, I'll show you where the fish are. We can't, we're fishers of men. Let's go. Everybody's like jumping for joy. I can see them. Thank you, Jesus. Did you know that's the greatest fisherman in the whole world? <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit, man. We got the net out. Let's get them. Drag them in. Thank you, Jesus. All right. John chapter 16. So when you start realizing, hey, that's his ministry. So I'm not offended when people start looking at me like there's something wrong with me. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit that's convicting that person of their sin and of their unbelief. And when the Holy Spirit and I come walking in and you're already saved and you're looking at me like there's something wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with me, it's just your conscience convicting you of what you did wrong. It's the Spirit of the Lord because there's righteousness following in in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So, John chapter 16, verse 10. Of righteousness... Because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of God without the sense of guilt or inferiority as if sin never existed. Woo! That's me, folks. Righteous Robert. Yes! Amen. you got to realize, you know what you used to do? No, nope. I'm dead to that. All I know is my future. You must be aware that you can offend people because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You've got to know that. I walk into a room and go, oh boy, here he is. Oh man, you know, he's going to preach a message. Oh boy, watch out. That's because the Spirit of the Lord's talking to that person who's doing the mumbling. Because you think, I walk in, I walk in like I have a robe of righteousness on me. I'm walking in because I know who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. And all these other people are shaking in their boots because the Spirit of the Lord goes, Hey, you remember me? I talked to you last week. Oh, you're here. Ah, oh, I want to leave. I got to go. And people want to do that. It's not because of you. You're not the one doing the offending. And it's not the Holy Spirit. It's their guilt and consciousness that's speaking to them of what see, is. So you got to remember the Holy Spirit. Everybody listen to me really quickly. This is so profound. He, his ministry is on holy, holy, holy. And when a holier than holy comes in, which is God and the Holy Ghost, 
And if you don't have right standing with God, you're going to know it. So that's why the people are offended, because they know they're not right standing with God. But when you know you're right standing with God, it doesn't bother you, because he isn't talking to you. He's talking to the ones that aren't. Say, so thank you, Jesus. And that's why people go, oh, no, I feel so uncomfortable. I don't want to be in ill. Oh, he just makes me feel so bad. I can't be. It's not you. So it's my friend, the Holy Ghost. And you thought you were by yourself. He's standing right there talking to you. Ah! <laughs> you got to realize who it's doing it. Amen. Amen. All right. You cannot stop it. You can't say, Holy Spirit, don't bother them today. Leave them alone. Excuse me. He'll go, zip it, buddy, because that's my job. I want you to understand the Holy Spirit knows his ministry. And that's what he does. And there's nothing you can do to stop it because that's what he's going to do regardless if you're there or not. He will minister. That's his spirit of the Lord. It's his job. Amen? Mm -hmm. So don't think just because you walk in people are offended at you. They're not. Well, Holy Spirit, you have to do that now. Can't you wait a little bit? Don't ever do that because now you're offending him. Now you're getting him all quenched. And you think your message is going to be any good? Mm -mm, not without him. So you got to come in. Okay, Lord, you got to prepare yourself. Let's, how many people can we get saved before the ministry starts? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. How many people will get healed? Lord, just let them get all excited for you, and then we'll just reap them like that. Oh, yes, Jesus. So you got to think like the Lord. You got to act like the Lord, and you got to figure out you are going into war because you're taking them out of the hands of the enemy. And you got to think positive to grasp on every person you can get your hands on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. You guys that can do this. All right. So just relax and enjoy it. I mean, I've learned how to relax and enjoy. I've come into a lot of places. Oh, boy. I know he used to say, and they talk like this and do all this stuff. Who's talking? It's not me. It's not them. It's the devil using them. And the Holy Spirit goes, uh-huh, you watch me. I'll get him. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So there is a conviction of unrighteousness, and that's what's going on. So when you know you're going to go out and get some people saved, and they're acting uncoverable, well, can we do this a little later? I really need to go. I, I, I. That's the uncoverable. you got to know, okay, it's the Spirit of God. It's already got them. I just need to reel them in. This is fun time. Come on, get the hook out, get the stuff. we got to bring them in. Haven't you ever just like, and that old tribe goes flying over your head? <laughs> huh? Have you ever done that? You hook a tribe, who and you just pull like this, and it goes flying in. That's what you got to think. Man, when I hook onto a person who's, and you go, I don't feel I should be doing, oh baby, whoo, hook that baby and bring him in. Are you following what I'm saying? Because I'm working in fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. You all see why the first hour is so important. Now you start going, oh, wow. And the doors are going to start opening like floodgates and you're going to go, man, how many did you get saved this week? Ha ha, why are you so weak? You should have got 15 or 20. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I used to know this car salesman. He got born again, and I'm, I'm preaching this stuff. And, he, and I said, how many cars did you sell this week? He said, oh, I think I sold one or two. And I said, where were you weak? I just didn't get that guy to do it, you know. I said, how many people did you get saved? I didn't get any. You're really weak. <laughs> Where's your closing techniques? Come on, bring them in. <laughs> and I have fun with people like that. But, you know, you're reeling them in in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, know that the Holy Spirit is working with you on the other side that you don't see. So, amen. You've got to realize the same thing. He's doing that when you're ministering healing. He's doing that when you're, when you're preaching salvation. He's doing that when you're getting people to get saved. He's doing that when you're getting people forgiven, forgiveness of their sins and just get into unforgiveness and they're going to get all that poison out and you get them delivered, whatever. It's the Holy Spirit working. So you guys are going to have fun now. You're starting to realize this. Praise God. Okay, Acts chapter 2. Can you tell I'm on a roll? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> all right, this is a long, long, long scripture. But we can do this. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. That's a whole lot of people. 
Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now this is an area I underlined in my Bible. You've got to realize it was the Spirit of God that let the people hear, even though they were speaking in tongues, in their own language. So you've got to realize it was the Spirit of God making it so you heard in your language, even though they were praying in other tongues. And they were all amazed and marveled. Because you've got to realize, if every nation was there, and all people are talking, am I going to hear what they're saying without the interpretation of the Holy Spirit showing me what's going on? No way without Him. You've got to see how this is working, right? How hear we every man our own tongue, wherein we were born? And it goes on and tells where they are from. Verse 11, Crete's Arabians, We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What does this mean? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up when eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, the hearken to my words. Okay, listen up. That's what he's saying. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing as but the third hour of the day. Man, this is like nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in and earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. And we're going to go on and on. But you've got to realize this. Listen to this words and see how you like listening to this. If you ever want to herald somebody, say the next time Pastor Dan comes to the United States from Africa and I put up a message and I will be speaking and I'll say, Ye men of Portland, Oregon, hear these words of Pastor Amakobi, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God does to, by him in the midst of you. See, when you stop and think, signs, wonders, and miracles, obviously if that's happening, God approves the ministry. If there's no signs, wonders, and miracles, no salvations, if you're preaching salvation, you don't get salvations, God's not approving your ministry. If you're preaching deliverance, you get no deliverance, God's not, appro not approving your ministry. If you're preaching deliverance, you get hundreds of deliverance, God's, God approves it. If you're getting people spirit-filled, God approves it. If you're getting miracles and signs and wonders following you, God approves your ministry. And that's who you need approval from. Mm -hmm. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I read all that just to say, the Holy Spirit is the proof of Jesus rising from the dead. He proves that Jesus is the only righteous person who has ever lived. And as you go on, and you'll see verse 32, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being on the right hand of God, God exalted, having received the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, He has shed forth this which you now see and you hear. That's all that Peter preached is to tell you that what you heard was the Holy Spirit with them and the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And this is a sign and a wonder. And that Jesus is raised from the dead. And this is proof of it. When you hear someone praying in tongues, you hear someone prophesying, that is a proof that Jesus is, will draw, is alive from the dead. Say, so thank you, Jesus. Amen. So that's what the Holy Spirit's ministry is to do. Acts chapter 4. In verse 31. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit convicts that unbelievers are not in right standing with God. Okay? In verse 31 it says, am I in the right chapter? Yes. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart 
and of one soul. Neither said any of them that they had aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great power. So the Holy Spirit gave power in greatness to the apostles to demonstrate that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. So with the demonstration of a healing, demonstration of deliverance, baptism of the Holy Spirit, your next part is to go. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Those of you who haven't received him, now's the time to get Jesus in your heart. Man, what a time to collect people into the kingdom of God. Because a miracle just happened in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that miracle convicts the unbeliever he's not in right standing with God. And he wants it. I want it. Because on the inside, their little spearman goes, Yes, I want to be it, but I don't know how to do it. And that's where you come in and say, It's easy. Just say these words. They say what you tell them to say. And the Holy Spirit gets them. It's that simple. Isn't that easy? Praise the Lord. John chapter 16. It's like getting married, man. You go down to the, to the preacher, man, and he says, Say these words. Do you take this person to be your lawfully wedded husband or wife? And they say, Yes. You're in. You just got married. What? I just said what he told me to say. You're in. That's it. There's no way out. You spoke the words. You see, when you see it like that, that's how God sees you getting saved. You spoke the words. You're in. And you may not know what happened to you, and you may not be a good husband, but you're still married. You may not be an awesome person yet because you haven't got understanding yet. And do you think you just got married right then you know exactly what to do? No. You have to work it out. Find out that they snore. <laughs> and not be offended. Say thank you, Jesus. Shh. <laughs> thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Where are we? Acts 16, verse 11. Excuse me, John 16. You're absolutely right. Got too many acts and fingers on here. All right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In Acts 6, John 16, 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, judgment means a formal opinion given by a court of law. Just pick that up and hang it up quickly. Thank you, Jesus. So here we are. Judgment means formal opinion given by a court of law. When the judge says, I've made my decision, that's a done deal. There's nothing you can do to reverse it. It's over with. It's done. And that's how it is of judgment. It's a done deal. You're done. And I tell people this to, so you get an understanding. How many chances did Adam have with the Lord? Everybody say zero. One time he messed up. Is it? So when the Lord says, that's it. I'm casting you out of heaven, devil. That's it. I found iniquity in you. That's it. There's no second chance for the devil. It's done deal. It's judgment. Now, you all know when we convict a man of death on the death row in the United States, he don't die the next day. How many know that? Because they set up a situation for appeals and all this and that. He might be on death row for years. The devil is on death row. You all know that. But while he's there, he's acting out like he's not on death row. So don't believe a lie that the devil says. He is on death row. Judgment day is already proclaimed. It's a done deal. So why would you want to connect yourself with the devil and say, I don't believe in Jesus? Stupid. So the Holy Spirit is here to tell you, you're not standing right with the Lord. And if you'll ask Jesus in your heart, I'll take that judgment off of you. And I'll put a seal of righteousness on you. And that will never come off of you. Oh, yeah. There's a mark on you. He put a mark on Cain and everybody knew it. Don't you kill that man. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And that man lived his life in agony because he had a seal, a mark on him that everybody could see. Well, you have one. You just don't see it yet. And it says, right standing with God, righteousness. Amen. Give this person a brand new righteous robe in Jesus' name. You've already got the mark of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Yes, I'm in the right chapter again. Thank you, Jesus. I'm having a good time. 
And I'm sure you are, because the power of the Lord is working within you to teach you this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, Thank you, Jesus. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Have you ever noticed a person who's not saved doesn't understand a word you say when you quote scriptures? So don't quote scriptures. They don't understand what you just said. All fallen short of the glory of God. Well, what do you mean by that? I don't know what you're talking about. They don't know because they don't understand. So instead of talking to them in scriptures and saying, you're going to go and you're going to go to hell. <laughs> says right here, the lake of fire. That isn't going to turn a person. It's the goodness of God that turns them. You tell them about the joy and the love that God has and all the prosperity. And I was, I was ministering salvation in a mall one time. And nobody would walk up to our table because we're giving away tracks. <laughs> so my boldness, I saw these young teenagers, kind of shaggy looking persons, you know. I says, hey. Come here, I want to talk to you. She says, no, no, I'm busy. I said, I'll, I'll give you a word. It'll make you rich. And I had him now. I got fish on. And he says, what do you mean? I says, do you realize if you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, he'll show you where the gold is? He'll give you prosperity? Wouldn't you like that? Yeah. Well, pray the prayer with me. Okay. And he prays the prayer. And the two guys are hanging out, didn't want to come. Hey, guys, yeah, I'm going to get rich. And he was excited. Do you think I lied to him? Of course not. I just showed him another way. Do you think the Holy Spirit will use whatever it takes? Because would God make that man rich? Yes. yes. Will he show him where the gold is? Yes. I says, you, all you got to do is listen to what he has to say. and He'll lead you right to it. Make it easier than you've ever had in your entire life. And boy, was he all excited, jumping. I'm going to be rich. I'm gonna be, how did you come? Boy, what's going on? Ah, it's Jesus in my heart. He's going to make me rich. <laughs> and that's a fact. And people looked at me like, what are you doing? I said, I'm just doing what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, and then we see over here in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, that Satan is the one that blinds the minds of the people. Look at it in verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Say blinded means they don't understand what it is you're trying to show them scripturally. You'll open the Bible. See what it says right here in this book? Well, so what? That's what they're going to say. So what's going to draw the person to want to be saved is a real simple miracle. It says, I want to show you two miracles. One, you're going to get saved. That's a miracle. And two, we're going to get your spirit filled. And that's the second miracle. And number one, A, little one A, if you've got a problem, Jesus will heal you before you pray the prayer. And I've used that technique, and a lot of times, this, oh, yeah, well, I got this problem. Well, let's, let, let's, would you let me minister, lay hands on you, and I'll show you how great our God is? He gets healed. What are you going to do now? Say no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's easy to get people saved as soon as they know that God loves them enough to heal them. So their minds don't become blinded anymore. Now they're open to the gospel. Now when you preach a word to them, they go, oh, really? Because it makes sense to them. Their mind is open in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 2, we see an interesting statement. We're talking about how the God of this world blinds people's minds. Look at what it says over here in verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. You used to be this way, but God's quickened you. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh where? And the children of disobedience. So the spirit of disobedience is now working in people. So all unbelievers walk according to the world as a child of Satan and dominated by the world of Satan. And I don't care how wonderful this person might look to you, dresses, talks, and goes to high society parties and has got plenty of money and is wealthy and says, I've never done this, never did that, never did that, neither did my parents. He, that person still is not good enough. He has to get Jesus in his heart. Amen. Amen. Are you starting to see the ministry of the Holy Spirit is really getting people saved? All right. Are you getting this? All right. Matthew 25. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word. Because when you start grasping on, I mean, Paul said, this is my gospel. Didn't he say that? Well, what is your gospel? How would you say, 
This is my gospel, and what is it to you? So what is the gospel of Jesus Christ to you? And you've got to learn how to speak it out. Hey, this is my product, and I'm sold on it. Y'all salesmen out there, right? Say, thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 25, 41. Jesus speaking, he says, then, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So at the second coming, people that are children of Satan will find out that they are lost. And it's too late. Goats are unbelievers. Sheep are believers. Hell was prepared only for Satan and his angels. And if you're going to stay connected, you're going with it. So you have the opportunity to get saved. Well, I didn't know. Nobody told me. Doesn't matter. So whose responsibility is it to get people to know and to get them saved? So one time you preach the gospel to somebody and they don't receive Jesus at that moment, don't think that that's the last they'll ever hear of it. Because the Holy Spirit will keep sending people all kinds of messages into that person's life to get him to come to salvation. I know how the Lord worked with me, but I didn't grab onto any of it because I thought I was smart. Mm -hmm. Some people would come and give me tracks. I said, oh yeah, I got one of these. Somebody just the other day gave me one of these. They did? Yeah, matter of fact, it was just like this one. Here, you can have this. I get it right back to them. And I would talk them out of it. Nobody came and gave me a track. I just told them that and they believed me because they're a Christian. And they thought I was telling the truth. I was lying to them. I didn't want them around. I wanted to get lost. Get away from me. I don't want you around here. So, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and said, Ah, I got you, Robert. Yeah! And so he used whatever it took to get me there. Broke the old crusty heart. <laughs> crack. Got me going. That's another testimony, but bless the Lord. When you realize the ministry of the Spirit of the Lord is to get people saved and get them out of the clutches of the enemy, and now that you're saved, you go, wow, what did I wait so long for? Because I was blinded, and you thought you were cool. All right, Revelation 20, we got about four more scriptures. Bless the Lord in Jesus' name. In the book of Revelation, chapter 20, I want to read to you in verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, with another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of the life was cast into the lake of fire. These scriptures are for unbelievers. And unbelievers will identify with fear of their future judgment. And you're not condemning the people to be lending enough. You've got a decision to make and it should be the right one. Let me show you the right one. Okay, in John chapter 14... Jesus spoke out words, and I tell you, it's so powerful word, but we, we just, it's just said in a little tiny sentence. John 14, verse 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. And you've got to realize, Jesus said that Satan had nothing in him. Now how many of us have ever been pushed around, dominated by a spirit that wasn't the Lord, a demonic spirit, and did certain things, and did certain words, and did acts of wrongdoing, and did a lot of thoughts and different things. That thing is hanging out with you, in you, around you, but they don't care where. But Jesus didn't have any of that. And we've got to realize that stuff still hangs out around us even though you're saved. And it ought not to be because you have power to tell it to leave and make your thought life only that which God wants in Jesus' name. So in Colossians chapter 2, 
Do y'all see how the Jesus said there's no devil in me? Mm-hmm. Did you know y'all can say the same thing? Mm-hmm. When you start saying it, guess what's going to happen? It's going to leave. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. You see, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my high tower. I trust in Him. Psalm 91, verse 2. Colossians 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Okay, you've got to realize, stop and think. Now, where are these ordinances written? Are they in some of the books in heaven, or are these on the ordinances in the law of the book? When you stop looking at the law that was written, and if you do the such and such, how many of y'all did some of those things? They shouldn't have. But that is now taken away, contrary to and took it out of the way, and nailed it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities, powers, he made a show of them, openly triumphing over them in it. So you've got to stop and say, hey, wait a second, that once was me, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ has set me free from that. So did that, done that, don't do it no more, because the Lord has redeemed me. Amen. He purchased me by his blood. Amen. So in resurrection, Satan's power to dominate mankind was broken. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Satan was judged. And I'm not participating with him. I'm participating in communion and fellowshipping with God. He is my father now. Say thank you, Lord. So, so what we want to do is turn to the last chapter, excuse me, last verse here is Romans chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. How many are getting excited? Amen. So I want to give you a resolution to the three areas of conviction. Number one, I said he convicts of sin, which is unbelief in Jesus. Convicts of a lack of righteousness and judgment. So the resolution to this is confess him as Lord. That gets rid of unbelief. Number two is believe God has raised Jesus from the dead because you believe unto righteousness. And ask him into your heart, which remits the judgment. Aren't you glad there's resolution for that? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with the mouth, thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. And verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want everybody here to say with me out loud, Jesus... Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God, and that God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Amen. Amen. Now tell somebody I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved and I'm glad of it. Praise God in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this awesome outpouring of the Holy Spirit's ministry. And we have understood it and we can work together in communion with you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. But we are led by you to do these things for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministry. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. As you give your seed offering every month of $25 or more, we're going to send you an awesome DVD. Our DVDs will include how to develop your spirit, uh, how to heal the sick, how to prophesy, how to give a word of knowledge, etc. We're going to do an awesome training and revelation knowledge that you're going to get from this ministry. So we want to pray for you as you pray for us. And when we have healing explosions around the world, we're going to invite you to participate and become a healing team member. Contact us with our, on our website at writer.org. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. 
And join us again next time for more of Ryder Ministries with Pastor Robert Ryder.